dark trying to hide you and steal you away. against our God. We stand on your victory and shout out your
privilege to get to worship with you this morning. We are so glad that you are here. Uh, I hope that you are um, recognizing the spirit moving in this place. It is a powerful thing when the people of God gather to corporately praise him. So thank you so much for being here. If you are a guest this morning, we would ask that you would uh, take out your phone and text in FL guest one word to the phone number 833-571-3475. That gives us a record of your visit, which is helpful for us, but it also allows us to connect you with a life group or a, an area that you can serve, and I think that's helpful for you. And so if you'll text that in, that would be great. We would appreciate it. And then for anybody, if it all during this service or throughout the week, you feel a prompting by the Spirit to uh, reach out and maybe ask questions about baptism, about church membership, or maybe you just need prayer with a pastor, you'd like to speak with a pastor, ask some questions, uh, that same phone number, 833-571-3475, but if you'll text FL Respond, that'll give us an opportunity to reach back out to you as soon as we're able. 
Uh, we are uh, encouraging you over the past six months, we've been doing this and we're not done yet, uh, to set an alarm for 8.06 a.m., p.m., or both. And when that goes off, just simply pray for our church. That's what the alarm is called on my phone. Pray for our church and just take a couple minutes. Uh, it goes off on my way up here each morning after I drop my son off. And it gives me an opportunity in the car just to, uh, to think about uh, you guys and us guys and where we're going and, and where we've been and, and to lift us up to the Lord. And so if you would do that, pray for our church. We are in the search for a youth pastor. Be praying for that. Uh, we've called Dr. Jason Burden to begin as our pastor, and he'll be here in two weeks. Pray for that transition, as well as praying for First Baptist Nederland. Uh, they're in the same position now that we were in a few months ago, and so they need prayer. Pray for that church. Pray for Dr. Burden. Pray for our youth pastor that's coming. Uh, I also want to let you know that a week from today, uh, in the chapel at 6 p.m., we will have our hymn sing. Uh, we'll also be doing communion that night. Uh, it is a really rich time. Even if you think, I'm not into hymns, I'd encourage you to get there, and you might find that with Tim Thornton, you might be into hymns. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We get through a lot, uh, uh, a lot of hymns in that hour. There's no break. We just go one after another. It's a ton of fun. We would love to have you there. We'll also be taking communion. Hello. Hello, David. Hey, Dr. Hardage. Dr. Hardage. Dr. Hardage. Dr. Hardage. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Hardage. Thank you, Dr. Hardage, for filling in wherever was needed, for loving on us, encouraging us, and guiding us until Dr. Burden arrived. And he looks right at them and says, but who do you say I am? And Peter stands up and says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus then says, and upon this rock, I will build my church. How old is your baby? Three weeks. Well, there's one back over there that's two weeks old. This is amazing. Don't you worry. I will have those babies asleep in no time. I may have even told you this same story. You see, I'm at the age I can remember my stories. I just can't remember to whom I've told them. Jesus will have to be the most important person in our life. Our relationship with him will need to be the most important relationship that we have. Um, you're, you're stylish, uh, whether it's in your, your uh, athletic running pants or your, your suit with the tennis shoes, you always look good. I'm gonna build up suspense to this. Um, my apologies, I did not preach long enough today. <laughs> and now, I, I just gotta say this, so I know you all can see me. This is a real revelation to most people in the church. I can also see you. If you don't know where Brenham is, then I can't help you. Uh, that is the home of Bluebell Ice Cream. And you should just know where it is. You have been a blessing. You have been exactly what we needed when we needed it. These last few months have been amazing uh, for me and everybody on the worship team. Impactful presence in our church uh, during these last few months. There's spiritual fruit all over your tree. I believe you've made a kingdom difference here both for our entire church as well as for us as individuals. I'm saying to you, First Baptist Church, there is some good news out there and the good news is your sins, my sins, our sins are forgiven because of the blood of Jesus Christ. God will use someone who's responsible, dependable, just be someone you can, that can be counted on. Integrity means we're the same every day, Sunday through Saturday. We will always be thankful. An eternal and grateful thank you for both you and Mrs. Hardage. I just pray many blessings for you and your family. David, I can't begin to describe the kind of esteem and admiration that Christian and I have for you and Kathleen. Thank you for being who you are, for serving the congregation at First Lubbock so well for these months. And I look forward to running into you all over the state in the months to come. Thank you for being a great friend, David. We love you. You've been really fun to work with. 
Well, I didn't expect any of that, but I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. It's been an honor to serve, and I'll say a few more things about that uh, a little bit later, but thank you so much. Kathleen and I are indebted to you as a church, and we have been most blessed. Thank you. I do have a special guest with me. I've had quite a few in these past few months, but I have another special guest with me today. Stan Granberry's here. Stan's on the third row. If you get the uh, Connect 360... Those of you who use the Connect 360 Bible study material here at First Baptist, Stan uh, helps make all of that happen. He's a part of the uh, uh, GC2 press team at Texas Baptist. So Stan, thank you for being here today. And he's on his way to an annual meeting of the Lamisa Baptist Association tonight. But Justin Hanby, who serves on this church, is on the board of GC2 Press. And Stan was able to meet Justin today. So Stan, thank you for coming this morning. Glad to have you here. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the day, the blessings of the day. Thank you for this church. Thank you for our time to be able to gather and worship you. And we praise you this morning. We acknowledge your presence in this place. Thank you for loving us. And we commit this time to you. And we do all of that in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son and our Savior. Amen. Amen. The psalmist said... Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. And later in that same psalm, in the 103rd psalm, he said, don't forget all that he's done. Bless him, don't forget. Bless him, don't forget. So our next two songs are going to give us a chance to bless God for all he's done. So let's stand together as we sing.
Amen. Thank you so much. It has been a great blessing, Johnny, working with you and this whole worship team. Thank you. I can't thank you enough. Uh, nothing but a blessing. So, what's next? Where do we go from here? Well, for me, next Sunday, I will be at the Columbus Avenue Baptist Church in Waco, Texas. Their pastor, a friend of mine, Josh Vaughn, several months ago uh, invited Kathleen and I to attend their uh, Come Home to Columbus Sunday. I used to be their interim pastor. That's the church where I was the interim pastor for 25 months. The good news is they survived it, uh, still standing, and we'll be back there to celebrate a special Sunday uh, with that church next Sunday. On November the 3rd, uh, I'll be speaking at the Double Mountain Baptist Association annual meeting. That'll be held at the First Baptist Church in Anson, Texas, where my father used to be the pastor many years ago. So I will look forward to going back to that church where I spent a few years as a child. On November the 10th, I'm preaching at the First Baptist Church in Liberty City, Texas. I wonder how many people here know where Liberty City is. See none. It's in far east Texas, almost to Louisiana, not far from Marshall, Marshall, where East Texas Baptist University is. On November the 17th, uh, that evening, I'm speaking at the First Baptist Church in Waxahachie, and what's happening that morning is yet to be determined, so we'll figure that out. After all of that, I'm not sure. We'll see. Maybe I'll spend a Sunday or two going to church with Kathleen at our regular church. We'll see if that happens. But that's for me. What's next for you? Well, back when I was the interim pastor at Columbus Avenue a number of years ago, on my last Sunday there, and I built this up for two or three weeks before that last Sunday, I announced that I was going to preach on my last Sunday a one-minute sermon. So we built that up pretty big, and as you might expect, as good Baptists would do, we packed the house that day. Who wouldn't want to hear a one-minute sermon? What they didn't know was that I actually had 20 of those. So on that day, Kathleen, sitting on the front row there, just as she is here today, she brought with her a stopwatch and a little bell. So I got started, and after one minute, she rang the bell to the stunned surprise of the whole church. I changed subjects. I preached another minute. She rang the bell. We did that 20 times. I'm not going to do that today. But I will tell you what I shared with them in my first one-minute sermon those years ago. When Jason and Christy Burden get here, I am asking you every time you see them, tell them your name. They want to know your name. They want to learn your name. So make it easy for them. Every time you see them, stick out your hand and tell them who you are. And I don't care if that takes 50 times. Never, never, if I hear that anybody's done this, I'm coming back. <laughs> never go up to either one of them and ask, do you know who I am? Never ask them, do you know my name? That's happened to me. It's happened to Kathleen. 
Don't let that happen. Until you can name everybody in this church, in both services, and in all the Sunday school classes, you make sure they know who you are because they're trying to learn your name. Ding. (laughs) But today, something different for First Baptist Church Lubbock. Take your Bible and turn with me to the first chapter of the book of Acts, chapter 8. I know that for many of you, this will be a verse with which you are familiar, but I do want to remind us of it, refresh our memories on it. So take your Bible, the New Testament book of Acts, chapter 1. I'm going to read just verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Going forward, First Baptist Church Lubbock, you go forward with the power and under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. In this verse, with which most of us are familiar, this is after Jesus' death on the cross. It's after his burial. It's after his resurrection. This is before his ascension. This is one of his appearances to his followers. And he tells them, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Now that happens, we read an account of it just a few verses later. About 120 of them are gathered in Jerusalem. They're in that upper room and the Holy Spirit miraculously, mysteriously descends into that room, appears like flaming tongues of fire on their head. It is an amazing account. You go forward believing this promise from Jesus You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now, as Baptists, generally speaking, we have no problem acknowledging an omnipotent God, the Father. All-powerful Father God. Generally speaking, we have no problem acknowledging the miraculous work of Jesus. His miracles in the New Testament, we read about, we accept, and we believe. We understand that he is a miracle worker. We don't have any problem with that. I don't know why it is that we seem to, we tend to just back off a little bit when it comes to believing in the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit. So I'm saying to you, I'm encouraging you individually and collectively as a church, go forward believing in the power and under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And every Sunday, you have a reminder of that when you walk in this auditorium. God the Father, the hands of the Father in that window. Jesus the Son, the Lamb of Christ in that window. The Holy Spirit, the dove in that window. You have a reminder of it every Sunday when you walk in this church. There is an all-powerful God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Go forward believing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Years ago, I was also the interim pastor at the First Baptist Church in Huntsville, Texas. As you can tell, I have a hard time keeping a job. (laughs) So I was also their interim pastor. Beautiful church. The church is located right across the street from the Walls Unit, the prison there in Huntsville. So the church has a significant prison ministry. So I'm the interim pastor there. We were living in Waco at the time. I was working at Truett Seminary. And one weekend, you'll remember Hurricane Ike. Hurricane Ike came right through the Gulf of Mexico, right into Galveston, right across Houston, 
right up the I-45 corridor into the woodlands, into Kingwood, into Conroe, and then into Huntsville. Well, one morning, that Sunday morning, we got up early, getting ready to go to church. The phone rings because we were driving from Waco to Huntsville early every Sunday morning. The phone rings, and it's the chairman of the deacons of the First Baptist Church in Huntsville. And he says, Pastor, no need to come today, and I'll never forget what he said. He said, Pastor, don't come today. There's no power in the church. Well, I knew what he meant, but I said, excuse me? He said, well, the electricity's out. I said, I got it. But sometimes I wonder if we really believe that there's power in the church. What if, what if one hot Sunday in August, you all came down here to the First Baptist Church and you walked in, the lights weren't on, the air conditioner wasn't on. The first thing you'd do is find somebody and say, is the power out? And what if they said, oh no, we just didn't turn it on. It's time to turn on the power of the Holy Spirit, believing that the same God who's all-powerful and the same Jesus is who is miraculous is the same Holy Spirit who will lead and dwell, empower the church going forward. You go forward under the power and leadership of the Holy Spirit. You go forward making a positive witness, being a positive witness to who Jesus Christ is and to what he's done. That's what he says here. And you will be my witnesses. So we are to be. It is our responsibility to be, to bear witness to who Jesus Christ is. And you know what we believe about Jesus. I've said it before. I'm going to say it again today. We believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin. We believe he lived a perfect life. We believe he died on the cross at Calvary. We believe he was buried in a tomb. We believe he was raised again by the power of God. We believe he's ascended into the heavens and is sitting at the right hand of the throne of God. And we believe he's coming again one of these days to receive all of us unto himself for all eternity who believe all of that about him. That's what we believe. It's our responsibility to bear positive witness to that every day and in every way that we can. Have you ever been summoned for jury duty? So Kathleen and I have lived in a lot of different towns. We lived in Dallas now for, I guess, about, I guess, going on 13 years. Neither one of us are city people. We're both small town people, but we live in Dallas and, uh, but, but we've been called for jury duty, both civil court and criminal court. We've been called for jury duty in Dallas more than any place else we've ever lived. So I have a theory. Now, for those of you who are in the legal world, if my theory's wrong, there's, don't, do not feel compelled to come tell me afterwards. But my theory is, because in Dallas County, so few people show up for jury duty who are called my theory is that if you actually show up, you get put back in the hopper more often. So I never get chosen, but until one time, finally, about three years ago. Now, Kathleen, she gets picked every time. I don't know why, but she is exactly what they're looking for. But, you, you, you know, at the time I was on the jury, you know, I'm sitting in that little jury box and feeling pretty proud of myself for having been chosen and then they start the case and the lawyers call up witnesses after witnesses and every witness they call they call to be a positive witness for their side of the story Jesus is calling you and me to be a positive witness every day for who he is and for what he's done but sometimes, I think, I, maybe you, unintentionally 
bear a negative witness and push away the very people we're trying to draw in. But going forward, a renewed commitment to live with the power and under the leadership of the Holy Spirit and to bear a positive witness to the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ. And to pray and to give and to go and to do throughout the world. Take that story of Jesus to the ends of the earth. Just look at the geographical progression of Acts 1.8. You will be my witnesses, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the world. Uh, So just take that and let's interpret that for 2024 where we are right now. You will be my witnesses in Lubbock, in Texas. I think everybody knows that Samaria is Oklahoma. You will be my witnesses (laughs) to the ends of the earth. That's just the way it is. Take it seriously. Right here in Lubbock, First Baptist Church, you are called to bear witness to, to take the good news of Jesus Christ to the people of Lubbock. And then you join with the rest of us who make up the Baptist Union Convention of Texas to bear witness to the good news of Jesus Christ throughout Texas. That's our Judea. And then that place next to us, which truly is the rest of the United States and to Mexico, Central Mexico, throughout the to the ends of the earth. That's our responsibility. Let me just talk for about, just for a minute about Texas. So you know what the population of Texas is today? The population of Texas right now today, we have crossed the 31 million mark. Now here's a statistic for you. 31 million people call Texas home today. Now 45% of those who live in our state right now, would say to you or to me that on some level, to some degree, they belong to some religion. Now you turn that coin over and what does it say? 55% of everyone who calls Texas home today, spiritually speaking, doesn't believe in anything or anyone. So we've got our work cut out for us. And by the way, I think if those percentages are statewide, they're probably fairly accurate for Lubbock. Just look at the population trends of our society. Did you know that in Texas, 25%, one-fourth of the population of this state are single adults who live by themselves? Now, when I was the executive director of the state convention, I preached in about 700 churches over the course of about 11 years. And every single one of those churches into which I would go, they would all say to me in a conversation, you know, we're just trying to reach the young families. And I would say, well, that's great. Reach the young families. You know, in 1970, 42% of the households of Texas were made up of a mother and a father and children at home. Now, you fast forward to 2020, 2024, that's now down to 21%. So 21% of the households of Texas are made up of a mother and father and children at home. All that to say, if this church wants to reach the young families, reach every single one of them, and then you have 75% of the population still to reach for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And 25% of those are single adults living at home. 25, another 25%, a full one-fourth of the population are people just like Kathleen and me. Married adults, no children at home. That's a fourth of the population of this state. Our state continues to grow. You know, every single day in Texas, about 500 people die. But every day in this state, a thousand people or more are born. So every single day, there's 500 new Texans. Every day, people migrate into our state from the other 49 states for reasons I can't explain. Every single day, people move from Texas to one of the other 49 states. But on average, about 400 people more a day move into Texas from the other 49 states than leave here to go elsewhere. They're migrating here from all over the country. In the last 25 years, 5 million people have moved from California to Texas. People immigrate here from all over the world. 
every day. People immigrate here from all over the world. Every day people leave here to go to other parts of the world. But every day on average, somewhere around three to 400 more immigrate into Texas than leave here to go to elsewhere in the world. All that to say, this state is growing and this state is changing. And First Baptist Lubbock, going forward, you pray like you've never prayed before. You give like you've never given before. You go like you've never gone before. You go places you've never gone before. And you do ministry like you've never done it before. Where I am serving now with the Texans on mission, there's a partnership right now that you could be a part of with the nation of Israel. We have a partnership with the Israeli Defense Force feeding Israelis, Palestinians, wherever they are. Hungry people with opportunities that go along with that to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Partnerships with the country of India. Partnerships with Uganda. Partnerships with Peru. You pray and you give and you go and you do ministry like you've never done it before. It is time to raise the game to a whole new level. The needs have never been greater. The call of God has never been stronger. So going forward, what do you do? I would propose that you go forward believing in the power and depending on the leadership of the Holy Spirit like you've never believed and depended on before. And I would beg you to leave this place today determined to be a positive witness for the difference that Jesus Christ makes when you acknowledge him as your Savior. And going forward, Please pray and give and go and do because the stakes are higher than they've ever been. I don't know if you follow me on social media or not. I'm on Facebook. I'm on X. Now, if you're not following me on social media, I'll be honest with you, your life is not as fulfilled and complete as it could be. Uh, But if you do follow me, you will notice that I have a couple of phrases that I use a lot. If I see something I like, I don't just click that little like button. I type in there, I like this. But I also have another phrase I use. I used it this week. On Thursday, I had lunch with a friend of mine. He's a pastor in Romania. He's the pastor of one church. He's the interim pastor of two other churches. And he leads a group of 70 churches in Romania right on the border with Ukraine. He does amazing ministry. Just proud of him. Glad I have a chance to know him. And we strategize together about ministry going forward. And maybe that's something this church could plug into in the future. But when I put my report kind of on my little social media, I said, great to meet with Pastor Catalin Corter, that's his name, from Romania, to strategize about mission and ministry in the future. And then I said, as I always say, good days ahead. I'm going to leave you with that because that's my belief for First Baptist Church Lubbock. Church. There are good days ahead. Amen and amen. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for the day. Our time, your word, this church, and this opportunity to respond. Heavenly Father, we just pause and give this time to you. Call us to you. Give us the courage to respond as we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you're here this morning and you've never acknowledged Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'm going to be standing right here at the front. Johnny will be played and they'll be singing and sing along. But if you don't know Jesus in just a minute, I would invite you to come take me by the hand and we'll have a conversation about that. And this church will be praying for you as you come. Maybe you're here. You need to walk before a fresh spirit. Maybe it's the Holy Spirit. Today you're going to start believing in that leadership and 
follow it today if he leads you here this morning. Maybe you're looking for a church home with which you can unite. I do believe there are good days ahead. Come be a part of what God is and will do in this place. But if you have a decision to make, make that publicly. There's a little power behind that. So you come. As we stand and as we sing, we invite you to come. take a minute and just pray for for these who've come and just uh, God thank you for our time today it's a blessing to be here in this place with your people we love you we thank you for loving us and this is our prayer in Jesus holy and precious name amen amen all right oh well hey hey you're not getting away that easy uh, I'm gonna run to the back like you usually do I so. see that I do, you gotta hurry to get this beat this group out of church right. I know that that's right well church um, as Dr. Hardy said this is his last official Sunday with us uh, I hope we see him back a, a lot over the next few years but uh, for me and I think I know everybody it's a bittersweet time we're ex- super excited about uh, where we're headed and our new start amen but uh, we've all grown to love and admire you over the last several months. And um, today we have a little gift here. Um, this, uh, if you follow him, you know that, um, I mean, I think uh, like almost every Saturday he's uh, running somewhere. And so I, 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 I got him. a lot of people chasing me. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's a runner. So we have a runner's gift bag here and um, it's got some, uh, you know, I think there's some carbohydrates in there. There's some, <laughs> there's some shoes that I think may shave some time off your runs. I think I'm not sure about that. But those those are miracles. Heard, those so. are miracle shoes. And, and then most importantly, you know, Kathleen has been so gracious to let him come and and um, you know serve with us. And so there's a, a, a gift card for her in there to a really nice restaurant uh, to to really acknowledge and thank her as well. But, um, you know, church, he, uh, he came in and has really helped us uh, shepherd us through this interim period. And uh, I'm, I know we're all appreciative. Let's give him a hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Very grateful. Thank you. It's our privilege, our honor. We've been nothing but blessed. Love the church. And I do believe there are good days ahead. Thank you. Um, before I pray, uh, pray for um, Dr. Hardridge, Kathleen, uh, one of the things that I'm going to do is uh, I've had a lot of people um, express 
uh, their desire to uh, do something special uh, for Dr. Hardage. And so on your way out today, there will be gentlemen out there with a, um, the plates. If you would like to give a love offering uh, for uh, Dr. Hardage and Kathleen, um, uh, just to kind of send them on their way, that would be great. Um, I'll say a, a word of prayer, and then we're going to stand down at front here, uh, the three of us, and you can come by and, and uh, say a word of, of uh, goodbye if you'd like to. So I'm going to pray for us now. Yeah, amen. Lord, I thank you so much that um, you sent Dr. David Hardage our way. Um, I know, Lord, um, you had that in your divine intentions. And uh, we praise you for that. Lord, I just pray for he and Kathleen as they move forward in, in still one of the most active ministries I've seen, uh, even in, in supposed retirement. And um, I pray for that next church that uh, he is an interim for, that you'll help them. Um, I pray you'll bless his work with Texas on Missions um, and that you'll just give him and Kathleen, some really rich years serving you into the future. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you all. We love you. Thank you.